Good afternoon everyone, it's David Schlothauer here, back with another detailed weather forecast. As we can see here, the weather pattern is about to get much more active by the weekend in or early next week as a cross-country winter storm brings a lot of snow and more severe weather. But first things first, here's a look at the European model and as we can see, this is the beginnings of what will be an active weather pattern, especially for the Northeast. And then once we get into the weekend, it will be across the West, the Rockies and the Northern Plains yet again with another winter storm, with another severe weather event for the High Plains. So we can see here for Thursday morning, there's a risk of showers and thunderstorms for the southeastern Texas region. And then once we go into Friday, the showers and storms cover much of Florida, portions of there of Louisiana and Arkansas. But again, nothing too significant with this initial storm system, but it's going to pair up with something even bigger that happens to the north. This is one of the reasons why the Storm Prediction Center has issued a slight risk for severe weather for much of Texas in its southern Louisiana, driven by only a 2% risk for tornadoes, but it's mainly driven by large hail. As you can see here, just a 5% for wind, but hail is at 15%. So a lot of you there in the metropolitan area, like um, say Corpus Christi and Houston, Texas, definitely need to be on the lookout here, including for San Antonio. But now zooming back out, looking at the entire United States. So we have two areas to really monitor. We got an area down here to the south, and the southeast, and then we got another area to monitor across the Great Lakes. There is going to be a phase up where these two systems collide into one another into the northeast and the eastern seaboard, and the ending result here will be a pretty impactful system. By Saturday morning, heavy rainfall, gusty winds, maybe some thunderstorms over Maryland, also for, say, if you're in portions there of, say, New Jersey, um, as well as Maryland, Delaware, including for... Um, Virginia, you got a best chance of seeing some rain, but that's not the only system that we have to monitor too. We got something going on across California, across Nevada, another Intermountain West storm developing in a hurry with some moderate to heavy snowfall for the higher elevations, strong winds, and some valley rainfall for the lower elevations like the Central Valley, the coastal ranges like to get quite a bit of moderate to heavy rainfall with this system, but it's going to do something even bigger once we get into Sunday morning next week. This is in four days from right now. Okay, put that on your calendar. We got a surface flow that rapidly develops over the eastern side of Colorado. This is what we call a lee side cyclone. So what happens is you get divergent flow aloft. You get surface pressure falls at the surface because that air aloft is diverging. You replace it from below. So that's why we get a lot of lee side genesis here over the eastern Colorado area into um, Kansas. And that's a 992 millibar system. Now, while there's not a whole lot here going on, it is not supposed to be because this is the early formative stage of this cyclone. But it's not until we get into Monday and Tuesday next week when this system really goes haywire. It goes gangbusters by Sunday night into Monday morning. And we can see that here in the next five days, that's a monster 988 millibar system with moderate to heavy snowfall. In fact, you could absolutely tell where the strongest winds are going to be because of the isobars, lines of equal pressure, really tightly packed from north to south, and that's where our strongest winds will actually be located. But it's not only that, to the south where we got that line of heavy rainfall, there could be a risk for severe weather, including the possibility for significant wind damage and the possibility for large hail initially with supercells before they coagulate into a very intense line of thunderstorms, what we call a MCS or a squall line. And that squall line will be the formative stage of some damaging winds in a wider area. And that's one of the reasons why the Storm Prediction Center has went a slight risk for day five over Portions there of Oklahoma, southern Kansas, and northern Texas. Now, going forward into Monday afternoon, big powerful system here, a comma shape, and that indicates that this system is very dynamic. We got a lot of dynamics to work with, with heavy rain, severe weather across the Midwest and the Deep South. Again, this is going to be making a lot of headlines when it gets closer with severe weather that is very, very much likely. And then, of course, for the north, heavy snowfall will continue, but that's not it. 
Let, watch and take a look at this system once it gets further to the east. You can see how it marches eastward over Indiana, over Ohio, Michigan with a risk for severe weather. And then, of course, over Alabama and Georgia eventually likely get some severe weather with that. Now, a lot of you are probably wondering how much snowfall could you see out of this storm system, let alone? Well, it's not looking very pleasant at all. Here's the first system with this kind of uh, what we call a Alberta Clipper. Not really an Alberta Clipper at this point, but you get the idea. This band of snow, that's the first system that can bring anywhere between one to two feet of snowfall for the extreme northeast. According to the Euro model, uh, such as, say, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Look at that, 39 inches on this model. That is pretty concerning. And then, of course, over the Dakotas and Minnesota, where you might get anywhere between a foot to maybe a couple of feet. Now, why is this weather pattern going to get so active in days and weeks ahead? Well, when we take a look at our jet stream forecast here at 500 millibars, which is 18,000 feet, let's kind of play this through very fast because we can see our first trough that is anchored here over the desert southwest and the intermountain west that's going to be ejecting into the plains by next week on monday and tuesday this is going to be triggering that first system for the midwest bringing lots of snow strong winds and heavy rainfall and severe weather for the deep south but then you get another one of these lows that kind of kind of droops off from that main trough and that might bring some inclement weather for the southeast on wednesday and thursday but it's not only that Let's take a look. Here comes another system by the end of next week. So not this Friday, but the following Friday. This is roughly 10 days away where we might see another system. But again, this is on the GFS model. Now, another thing to take note of is the temperatures. Look at these temperatures versus when you go into Hudson Bay, temperatures are negative 10 to negative 20 degrees. But when you go down into Texas, Oklahoma, you have temperatures in the upper 60s to low 70s. And then by the weekend is when it might feel like winter for some locations like the extreme northern tier of the United States where you might see temperatures in the single digits. Hudson Bay still negative 30 degrees. And then you get down here towards Texas where it is still pretty mild for the morning hours. And then by the afternoon, you have temperatures back into the 70s and 80s versus in the teens and single digits in Montana, part of that next upper level low pressure system. Now, before I do in the video, I do have five important announcements to share with you all. As always, I've been mentioning this in my past few videos. I am going to be hosting a total solar eclipse live stream on Monday, April the 8th, 2024. It begins in my location at Kerrville, Texas at 12, 15 p.m. We're going to be making the drive to Kerrville, Texas on April the 3rd. It's going to be a very exciting event. And not only that, I will be doing a Q&A live stream on April the 2nd about what my plans are for this solar eclipse. So I highly recommend you all joining that stream so that way your questions can be answered if you have any. And then, of course, my first Atlantic Hurricane Seasonal Outlook will be released on April the 15th. So on Monday, April the 15th is when it will come out. And then my first routine tropical weather outlook will begin on May 25th and it will run through November the 1st. But as always, you could also follow me here on Discord at Weather Force today. There will be a link in the description below this video along to go with my Twitter. Well, anyways, if you did enjoy today's detailed weather forecast, please consider subscribing. If you haven't already, hit the like button and share this video with your family and friends on social media. As always, have a great rest of your Wednesday. I'll be back in the home weather office with another detailed weather forecast tomorrow.